we have a race. We have a real race in Texas, and, and, and the reason is simple. Mm -hmm. The left is energized. Tens of millions of dollars are flooding into Texas from liberals all over the country. And it also means we're going to see record-setting Democratic turnout. Now, the good news is, in Texas, there are a whole lot more conservatives than liberals. And, right. and so this election is all about turnout. All right, here's Ted Cruz, one of those Republican senators running for re-election. Republicans trying to hang on to that very narrow majority they have in the Senate. We've been talking about potential midterm ramifications for the Kavanaugh nomination. You've got Republicans out there saying their energy is up. The polls showing the Republican voter energy is up a little bit. The question of whether that's going to last. Let's take a look at the Senate side, though, in particular. Some of the early readout we're getting on this. Check out some of the new polling we've seen. Now, this is North Dakota. This was taken before before Heidi Heitkamp voted no on the Kavanaugh nomination. And you see, even before that, she was in a world of trouble in North Dakota, 12 points behind Kevin Kramer, her challenger, Heitkamp, clearly the most vulnerable Democratic incumbent. Hey, North Dakota went for Trump by 36 points in 2016. She voted no on that nomination. We will see if she can pull something out there, but clearly the most endangered Democratic Senate vote. Now, the flip side, Joe Manchin, the only Democrat in the Senate to vote yes over the weekend on the Kavanaugh nomination and Manchin had been getting encouraging polling news out of West Virginia even before this vote. West Virginia went for Trump by 42 points, but Manchin has managed to separate himself from his national party. He was already in decent shape. He further separates himself from his national party with this vote. That might have improved his chances of keeping that seat Democratic in November. Tennessee, this one's interesting because you saw this poll come out yesterday. Blackburn leading Bredesen, the Democrat, by eight. There was another poll a couple days ago that had Blackburn ahead by five points there. It's a question of is there now momentum behind Blackburn? Uh, Bredesen had been performing very well this year, leading in a lot of polls, including one we took not long ago. Is this one starting, you know, Trump won this state big. Is it starting to become a Republican uh, hole? Texas, you mentioned Cruz. You show Cruz there. Cruz continuing to lead in Texas. Here's the other interesting one, though. Dean Heller, the only Republican incumbent up in a state that Hillary Clinton won on the Senate side. The only Republican senator up in a state Hillary Clinton won in 2016. He's trailing a couple points in this poll, uh, and he voted for the Kavanaugh nomination. So this could be a flip side politically of what we're talking about. Those Democrats in Trump states have to explain no votes to pro-Trump constituency. Heller's got to explain a yes vote to a state that voted for Hillary Clinton, and he's already in some trouble in the polling right there. So that's a quick look at the landscape. Joining me now on set as I make my way back over, we've got Patrick Murray, the Monmouth University polling director. He's been polling all sorts of Senate races, House races, key races all around the country. Patrick, thanks for taking a few minutes. Um, it is interesting going through those Senate numbers. We, we talk about the House all the time. We talk about the suburbs. But that is a reminder that when you're talking about battle for control of the Senate, you're talking about Trump country essentially right. being what's going to decide this. Right. And that's, actually, that's absolutely it. But one of the things that we've been seeing is that the Republican enthusiasm gap that you talked about earlier in the hour, uh, that Republicans have been closing that, um, has been happening slowly but surely since Labor Day. And I think a lot of it was it was, it was just a natural correction uh, that uh, the Democrats were just abnormally enthused mm. over the summer. And this was just a catch up. And I remember sitting across the desk from you probably a couple weeks ago and saying, I don't necessarily see a, a blue wave yet. I see a blue high tide. And guess what? I think we're still in that kind of uh, area right now. And that's, that's interesting what you're saying because the question we're asking is if it's a Kavanaugh surge in Republican energy, does the surge recede as the news moves on and Kavanaugh becomes something that feels like it happened 10 years ago? But if you're saying you've been seeing an uptick since Labor Day or so, that suggests something that might be more sustainable for Republicans. Yeah, and I think so. I think it's sustainable. In fact, uh, in the races that we've been polling over the past two weeks, we've been asking about the Kavanaugh impact. And in every single race, it's not changing voters' minds because pretty much where they stood is baked in. The real question is, do they go out to vote? That's where we are seeing a slight shift with a, a few more points of Republicans coming out to vote than we saw over the summer, which is keeping these races very tight. So we're seeing a whole bunch of races where the Democrats are lined up, uh, particularly in the House, where they're lined up uh, just a, a couple of points ahead, but really nothing's moving there. And they could all swing in the opposite direction by the time we get to Election Day. Then you see all these Senate races where things are up and down. And Senate races are, are, have a lot more 
more issues involved in them mm. uh, than the House races, just because it's a larger, uh, larger electorate that we're dealing with. But uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how this plays out because I, I think that the initial impact of the Kavanaugh uh, uh, effect and the, the fact, particularly that we've seen the polling in the last two weeks, was about the threat to the nomination. That's why I think that part of it will recede. But there's still an underlying sustainable increase in Republican enthusiasm that will still be there. The question is, is it going to be enough to just overcome Democrats and not lose too many seats? Um, or will it tick just a few points the other way and Democrats can pick up those extra seats? Hey, MSNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there and click on any of the videos here to watch the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more MSNBC for free every day with our newsletters. Just visit msnbc.com newsletters to sign up now.